morning, afternoon, evening people. So, back in the kitchen with Tony and Teddy, and today I was just about to bottle a stout that I've made. I didn't do it on video, however, I'm going to put this on for secondary fermentation, so I thought I'd do a short video explaining what secondary fermentation is, how we do it, and why we do it, and go through the different methods of carrying out a secondary fermentation on your beers and lagers. So why do we do a secondary fermentation? We do a secondary fermentation to make the beer fizzy. I'll explain how that works now. So when you brew any kind of alcohol, the yeast reacts with the sugar. A byproduct of that fermentation, of that sugar turned to alcohol, is CO2. This is why of an airlock, the airlock bubbles away as the waste product of CO2 escaping. Now when we bottle this beer, there will be residual yeast in this beer. If we add another bit of sugar, an amount of sugar, bottle it, that residual yeast will ferment that extra bit of sugar, CO2 will be created as a byproduct, only now the bottle is sealed and the CO2 can't escape and we end up with a fizzy beer. Now there's a few ways of doing secondary fermentation. If you're using a keg, you can siphon the beer off into your keg, add your desired amount of sugar solution, put the keg in a warm spot, Secondary fermentation takes place, the keg is sealed, the CO2 gets trapped in, you've got a fizzy beer. However, with the keg method, what I've found is when the keg kind of gets half, three quarters empty, all the pressure gets lost, you have to inject a bit of CO2, CO2 cartridges into that keg. Now, I don't use kegs anymore, I did used to. So, we do secondary fermentation in bottles. There's three methods of doing this. Well, two really, because two are kind of the same. The first method is you can buy fermentation drops from your home brew shop. Then add a couple of fermentation drops into each bottle to prime it. You then siphon your beer into your bottles, seal your bottles, put them on for secondary fermentation. The other method you can use is you can make a sugar solution. What you do then is divide, if you make 500 ml of sugar solution, you would desire amount of sugar, Divide that by the amount of bottles you're going to have, in this case 40. Get a small syringe and prime each individual bottle with the correct amount of priming solution. Then bottle your beer, secondary fermentation begins. The method I'm using today is I'm going to make my desired amount of sugar solution. I'm going to rack this off from this FV into a second FV, add my sugar solution into the beer or the stout in this case, gently stir it in, and then go ahead and bottle my beer. I'll take you through that now. So the first thing I'm going to do then is go on to make our sugar solution. I'm going to use 140 grams of sugar today for 40 pints, which is six US gallons. So we're simply just going to add 140 grams of sugar to a jug. I'm going to pour it two, but close enough. To that then, I'm just going to add about 500ml of boiling water, just over a pint. Just mix that sugar in, make sure it's all dissolved. Now we've got our sugar solution made up. If you're going to prime each individual bottle, what you would do is divide 500 by 40, whatever figure you get, Add that amount of solution to each individual bottle. Fiddly, time consuming. What we're going to do is just add this sugar solution directly to the beer as we rack it off. Now some people will say, oh you shouldn't do this because you're going to introduce oxygen to the beer and cause oxidisation and the beer will go bad. I've never had any beer go bad on me. As long as you're careful, try not to introduce too much oxygen to that beer. I'll show you that now. Okay, so make sure your fermentation vessel is sterilised and also make sure your siphon, auto siphon, is sterilised. Then we're just going to wrap the beer off from one FV to another. Let's make sure the end of the siphon tube is touching the side of the FV, that way you're not introducing a large amount of oxygen to that beer. In this case today I've brewed a nice strong stout you can see, very dark colour. Now the secondary fermentation process will add 
another half a percent ABV to the strength of the beer. So take your hydrometer readings, do the maths, whatever your final ABV is, add another half percent to that for after your secondary fermentation. What we're going to do then is that is half siphoned out. At this point, we're going to add our sugar solution. Now I hear you say, why don't you just add the sugar solution to this FE without racking it off, give it a gentle stir? Because the sediment is at the bottom of this. If we stir this, we're going to stir that sediment and the beer is going to take a lot longer to clear. So what we're going to do now is just give it a gentle stir. Try not to introduce any oxygen to that beer. Okay, so that's our beer primed, ready to be bottled, and ready to go in for a secondary fermentation. All we'll do then is bottle our beer, seal the bottles up, put those in a warm spot for about five days or so, and we'll end up with a fizzy beer. You could drink it straight away, but then it's best to just leave it to one side for probably another week, just let the sediment settle to the bottom for your beer to be nice and clear and ready to drink. So, I hope you found it useful. I hope I've explained how secondary fermentation works, um, if that's why you're watching. So if you did find it useful, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Happy brewing. Have a good day.